Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mitch. When I did my previous videos on DWM, I didn't show you how to program the system so that you can get into DWM from your display manager or your login manager. Because I just logged into DWM from the TTY using Stardex. Now the thing is, is that when you install the awesome window manager or the QTEL window manager, it automatically gets included into your display manager or your login manager. But with DWM, it doesn't. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Also, when I started using uh, ST, the simple terminal that comes with DWM, well, it doesn't really come with DWM. You have to install it manually, but it's made to work with DWM. When I started using the ST, the simple terminal, I noticed that in Vim, when I'm in my configuration files, the colors were way too dark. They were the same colors, but they were much more darkened. So I figured out how to change the colors in Vim. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I also learned how to manipulate the windows a bit more when my apps are opened in DWM. And I'm going to show you that. And believe it or not, it's going to be a short video. So let's get to it. So today, I'm in Arch Linux with the DWM Window Manager. And it's not a virtual machine. This is my real bare metal computer. So I'm going to open up a terminal. And you know what? I'm going to make that a bit larger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cd into USR, share, sessions, and, well, you know what? Let's just do a w PWD. So you can see I'm in user share X sessions. Okay, now I'm going to ls it. You can see this right here, this DWM dot desktop. That wasn't there. And I manually put it in. But when you install other desktop environments or even the Qtile window manager or the awesome window manager, that gets put into there automatically. But when you install DWM, it doesn't go in automatically. What I did was I copied the awesome period desktop, which you can see right here. Well, you know what? Let's go into it. So I'm going to vim into awesome. And that's what the awesome looks like. So what I did was I made a copy of it. And I just changed the name. I changed the name here from awesome to DWM. I left this line, highly configurable framework window manager. I left that there on line number four. I changed that to DWM and line number five. I changed that to DWM and I saved it. So let's get out of there. So that's all I did. And of course you have to use sudo in here. So I did sudo copy awesome period desktop to DWM desktop. And then I went in and made the changes. So now I'm going to open up my DWM desktop just so you can see it. Vim DWM. And that's what it looks like. So on line one, I have DWM. I left line three the way it is. Line four, it's DWM. Line five, it's DWM. And that's the way it is. So like I said, when you install a desktop environment or the awesome window manager or the QTEL window manager, that gets made automatically. But for some reason with DWM, it doesn't. So like in my previous videos on DWM, I was just logging in through the TTY using Stardex. And once that file is there, you'll be able to log in through LightDM or your favorite display manager or login manager, okay? So that's how that works. Now I'm going to clear the, now I'm going to CD out of there. I'm going to clear the screen. Now, another thing is when I switch to a simple terminal, and this is simple terminal, you can see right here, I'm running ST terminal. I noticed that the colors in my Vim configuration were much darker and I didn't like the way they looked. So what I'm going to do is Vim into a configuration file and I'm going to go into my Zesh configuration file. Vim dash RC. And this is the way it looks now. But 
when I switched over to using ST, I noticed my Vim configuration file looked like this. And the red was way too dark. And over here, I didn't like this brown over here. And even the blue is way too dark. So this is what you can do. I created a new alias in my Zesh configuration file. And I'm going to kick it up to my GitLab repository. So if you already downloaded my GitLab repository and you want this alias to be in your system, you're going to have to do a git pull and update your mesh folder from my GitLab repository, okay? But I created an alias, so I'm going to type it in. Vim color. And it's taken me into the folder where the Vim colors are. So now I'm going to clear the screen and I'm just going to do a PWD just so you can see where it is. So there it is. It's in user share Vim, Vim 91 colors. Okay. So that's the path in case you want to go there manually. So once in there, let's just clear the screen. Let's do an LS. So these are the colors that are available in my system for Vim. So you can test them out. So now I'm going to go to the other screen and I'm going to type in, let's go into my Zesh configuration file, Vim period Zesh RC. So we're going to test them out. Let's test out this one. Let's test out Peach Puff. Okay. See that there? So I'm going to go back to this screen. I'm going to hit the full colon. You're going to type in color scheme. Now, color scheme is one word. And also, color is spelled the American way, not the Canadian way, and not the British way. Okay? So there's no U in it. So color scheme is one word. We're going to leave a space. And we're going to type in peach puff, as you can see right here. And But we're not going to type in the period vim. We're just going to type in peach puff, okay? Peach puff. Ooh, I don't like that. So let's try another one. Now there's desert. Look at this one right here. Desert. So we're going to go back here. We're going to do a shift colon. And we can just use our arrows to go up. See, it brought up color scheme at the bottom there. So we're going to backspace this peach puff out. And I'm going to type in desert. And we're not going to type in the dot vim, just desert. Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that. And let's try one more, just so you see how it works. I wonder what this wild charm is like. Look at this one here. Wild charm. So let's try that. So we're going to go back to the screen. We're going to hit uh, the shift and the colon. We're going to use the arrows to go up. And we're going to delete this desert. And we're going to type in wild. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Charm. Oh, you know what? I kind of like that too. Now, the one I settled on is this. I settled on. Oh, before I do that, let's try another one. Let's go into morning. That's a nice one too, if I remember correctly. Shift, colon. Let's just use the arrows to go up and backspace this wild charm out and type in morning. Oh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> but what I settled on was evening. This one right here. That's the one I settled on. So let's go back there. Let's do uh, shift colon. Let's just backspace. And type in evening. And that's the one I settled on. So that's how you can test the colors out. Now, once I close my terminal, open the terminal and open up a vim configuration file it's going to be back to the default color okay so what i did was you decide what color you like and then you do this let's just close uh, this file and let's just close this so we're let's just close this and let's see the out of there and we're going to go into etsy and we're going to type in sudo vim vim rc. I'm going to put my password in. And you see I already have it in here. 
line 24, I have color scheme. I left a space and I have evening. So that's all you're going to do is you're going to put the word color scheme in your VimRC file. And remember, color scheme is one word and color is spelled the American way, not the Canadian or the British way. There's no U in color. Color scheme is one word. You're going to leave a space and you're going to put the name of the color in. And when you put the name of the color in, you don't need the period or the dot vim. You don't put that part in. So I have color scheme evening and that makes evening the default color. Okay. So now I'm going to close this configuration file. I'm going to close this. And another thing I discovered is this, it's using this little toggle switch here. <laughs> and I mean, it's right there. It's right in your face. You think I would have noticed it, but I wasn't using it. And now I am. So for instance, let's open up calculator. Now I don't have a key binding for the calculator in DWM. So I'm going to open up D menu mod key P I'm going to type in calculator. There it is there. So I'm going to hit enter. Now look how big it is. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. So what I'm going to do is toggle this thing on here and I'm going to hold down my mouse like that. And you see, you can move it around, right? And I'm going to go like this. There we go. That's nice size. Looks nice. There's my calculator. Now it's going to remember it. So let's close it. And let's go mod key P opens up D menu, type in calculator. There it is there, gnome calculator, hit enter. And there it is. Now, if I want that to be full screen, and I don't know why I would, I'm going to click this on. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to close it. Now, let's see what happens if I toggle this on again. And let's just open that up again. Oh, well, we can just fix that. There you go. Okay. Now, if I close it, and if I leave this on the way it is, There you go. So that's just a little trick. Uh, you know, I'm new to uh, DWM. I've been using it. I've been living in it. I've been playing with it and I'm learning more things about it and I'm really liking it. And that's it. In this video, I showed you how to program your system so that DWM will show up as an option in your display manager or the login manager. I also showed you how to choose a color that you like for your Vim configuration files and how to make it permanent or default. And I showed you a little thing about resizing apps in DWM. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mansion.